Take a look at the satellite imagery of this 500 mile monster as it now begins to skirt the eastern coast of Florida. We're joined by Nick Kanjemi. He's with the Coast Guard, joins us uh, by phone. He is in Miami with more now on potential search and rescue efforts. And, and Nick, uh, right now, uh, despite uh, Rick, uh, Governor Rick Scott's uh, dire warnings of the last 48 hours uh, saying very plainly that if you live on the east coast of the state you need to leave because this storm will kill you what do you know about those evacuation efforts and uh, perhaps who was uh, who's still left behind uh, well Josh thanks for having me uh, well <clears throat> the biggest thing for for the uh, maritime community is to stay off the water um, we, we've been working very closely with our federal, state, and local partners, and uh, we've been encouraging everybody on the water to, to heed those local warnings and evacuations. Um, but our search and rescue capabilities are limited during a storm like this. Uh, we move our personnel and our assets out of the path of the storm, uh, so that way, uh, as the storm passes, we can start bringing in our personnel and assets back into those areas so we can assess them and, do, uh, and, and begin any search and rescue efforts that, that might be necessary. It is uh, an, a maritime community, and obviously there are those who uh, have seen or will believe that they have seen this before. So as the storm does make its way north, uh, what would you say to someone who thinks, well, as the eye and, frankly, the outer bands have passed, it, it should be okay to head back out in the water? Uh, very, very good point. After the storm, it can be just as dangerous. Uh, there are a lot of hazards on those waterways. Uh, there's uh, navigational aids such as buoys and day markers that are often missing, broken, uh, damaged, or just, just inaccurate and off station. Uh, there's also a lot of underwater debris and hazards. So we don't recommend, uh, while it may be tempting to, to go out and, and, and check on your boat, uh, just don't, don't go on your boat, don't go out on the water uh, until it is uh, deemed safe by the, the locals uh, and, and by the local authorities. Uh, we are obviously hearing much about storm surge to, to this point. We are hearing numbers in excess of 10 to 11 feet uh, of surge. Obviously, there will be waves on top of that. Uh, for those who, can, can you walk us through exactly what uh, the idea of that surge is and just how uh, potentially dangerous uh, that much that much water would be. Uh, storm surge is is a very serious thing. Uh, that's that's why we encourage everybody to heed those evacuation warnings and just just get out of the, those affected areas. So follow your local guidance for evacuation orders. We don't want to be in in a situation where we're sending out our air crews to do a whole bunch of urban search and rescue. Uh, what, what we would like ideally is that everyone would leave those affected areas so we we can concentrate on only those uh, limited search and rescue cases that that really are necessary. Have you, have you, have there been uh, require have your efforts been required to this point in the storm? Uh, right now, there is no known search and rescue cases that we're working on, but that's certainly something that we're going to assess as the storm moves forward. Uh, the the people of, of the, the southern United States need to realize that as the storm approaches, that our search and rescue capabilities are limited. Um, as the storm is actually uh, approaching areas, it, it's, it's very difficult to put our crews uh, in those areas. Uh, it's very important if there is time that people remove their life jackets, life rings, and any emergency position indicating radio beacons. These are great life-saving tools for when you're on a boat, but if you're not on a boat, remove those items because they can get washed into the water, which leads us to believe that there may be a, a potential search and rescue case, and it's going to tie up our limited crews to work on cases that aren't legitimate when they should be working on legitimate search and rescue cases. And as we see, uh, again, video of this storm, uh, as it does begin to truly batter uh, parts of the east coast of the state, uh, I know, as Governor Scott said yesterday, uh, it, is it is certainly a question of not wanting to put first responders in harm's way that, that frankly the storm we're seeing could be as potentially fatal for you as it might be for those uh, making that decision to go out onto the water. Uh, well, Josh, uh, search and rescue is one of the core missions of the Coast Guard. It's, it's something that attracts a lot of members uh, to, to our service and it's, it's something that's inherent in our nature. Um, and. Uh, the, the biggest thing here is just to heed those 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 local warnings. Get out of those affected areas. Uh, our capabilities are limited, but uh, we we are a uh, search and rescue agency, and this is kind of the the core of what is is in the DNA of every Coast Guard member. 
Nick, uh, as a resident of the area as, as much as anything, was it your sense, you know, we haven't seen a storm make landfall like this in a decade. Was it your sense that uh, the majority of people in harm's way, in fact, heeded those evacuation orders? Uh, we've been wrapped up in our operations here in the Coast Guard. Uh, it, it, in working with our state and locals, we have been getting the word out. Uh, the streets are, are a lot emptier down here where I'm at in Miami. Um, but again, I would encourage everybody, especially mariners, uh, if they have time to prepare, get off the water, secure your boat, secure your belongings, listen to those local evacuation orders, listen to your, your officials. If they say uh, you need to, to get out of the area, heed those warnings. Again, Nick Can Jimmy with the Coast Guard. Uh, we very much appreciate your time, and we certainly do appreciate uh, the efforts uh, in so dire uh, a circumstance. Uh, thank you for it all. Thank you for having me, Josh.